time now for our rants and raves, and we start with you, Mike. Uh, okay, uh, we talked about Facebook earlier, and uh, I actually have uh, a rant for Facebook, and it involves Mark Zuckerberg and also some of the other top executives. There was an article earlier this week in the Wall Street Journal. I think they did a wonderful job at looking at what uh, Facebook did in 2018. They know and knew that they were increasing polarity in our country and our discourse, and they uh, looked at ways that they might stop it, and uh, Facebook dismissed it as a paternalistic thing, and they were also worried about cracking down too much on conservative groups. But one of the fascinating things that they found was that in 64% of the group joins, when someone joins a group, it's a group that's suggested to them, and that includes extremist groups. So essentially, yeah. people who are joining yeah. extremist groups weren't finding them on their own. They were finding them because mm -hmm. of the algorithms of places they'd already been, and Facebook was suggesting they join more of them. Got and it. they refused at that time to do away with that algorithm. I think that's a problem when you need people to do like All that. All right, Adam. I have a rant for the BBC, and like Mike, I'm kind of following up on our last segment. Uh, as you know, and some of our viewers will know, there's been this scandal in England. A top aide to Boris Johnson, the Prime Minister Dominic Cummings, got in trouble when he broke quarantine rules and drove a few hundred miles uh, to his parents' castle, if memory serves. He was caught doing this. A big furor ensued. And then we had on BBC's Newsnight show a presenter, Emily Maitlis, provide the following commentary. Let's take a look. Good evening. Dominic Cummings broke the rules. The country can see that, and it's shocked the government cannot. He made those who struggle to keep to the rules feel like fools and has allowed many more to assume they can now flout them. That's just a little snippet of it. Long story short, the BBC threw her under the bus. They put out a statement saying that she had gone too far, that the program as a whole contained responsible journalism, but basically they didn't like her, hmm. her tone. I'm so used to hearing incredibly combative uh, BBC presenters yeah. when I listen on the radio driving to or from work. Uh, what she was doing was completely in keeping with what they do. And it seemed to me a pretty accurate assessment yeah. of a broad segment of the public mood in England in response to this. Thing. Absolutely. So, um, they didn't have her back. And I thought it was kind of yeah. cruddy. Yeah, like, you know, what does it say? Andrew Neal is worse than him. All right, Lila. Um, so I have a rave today for Washington Post top editor Martin Barron, who's also the former top editor at the Boston Globe, who delivered his virtual online um, commencement speech to Harvard University uh, yesterday. And we have a clip. The public safety requires the honest truth. Yet education, expertise, experience, and evidence are being devalued, dismissed, and denied. The goal is clear to undermine the very idea of objective fact, all in pursuit of political gain. So what I love about this clip is that, and the whole speech is really a must view or a must read for anyone who cares about the media, cares about the free press. He's talking to the students about how we all have a stake in freedom of speech. We all have a stake in accuracy and facts and talks about the dangers of letting that lapse and, um, how how journalists for decades have given their lives in some cases in pursuit of freedom of speech and protecting facts and bringing things to light. And we all have a responsibility yeah. to to yeah. do what we can to continue that. Yeah, good, it, but it's just an one. inspiring speech. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Love Marty. All right, Dan. So I have a rant for about uh, almost a dozen local TV stations that took a video press release and um, and some of the written content from Amazon, which was positively talking about what they've been doing to make the workplace uh, safe uh, at Amazon. They took this material from Amazon and ran it without any changes, and few of them even mentioning that it was produced by Amazon. Take a listen. Millions of Americans staying at home are relying on Amazon. Millions of Americans staying at home are relying on Amazon. Millions of Americans staying at home are relying on Amazon. Jeez. <laughs> so there you have it. So they, some of them just read the verbatim, the script that Amazon provided for them. Um, there was one station that ran the entire report as a news weird. report That's and real. never mentioned it never mentioned that this yeah. was produced by Amazon. And I think, you know, one of the news directors was asked about this. He said, I didn't realize you produced this. Oh. So, it, you know, video news releases have been around yeah. for a long time. This is not a knock at Amazon. but Yeah, reminds me of that Sinclair 
op-eds from a few years exactly. ago. Everybody exactly. had to read the same thing. <laughs> All right. Well, exactly. finally tonight, um, I have a rave actually for the New York Times, which last weekend ran on its Sunday front page. A thousand obituaries that had culled from local newspapers all over the country. And it was only just a few of the 100,000 Americans who have lost their lives to the coronavirus. But they, they had n nice little snippets about each person that they took from these obituaries. So it made it personalized them I and it gave you a sense of, of who is who and, and just the overall toll of, of this devastating pandemic.